This is a demonstration of how a lab seal works and how to install a lab seal. You can see there's grooves inside this aluminum seal and basically air and the gas and oil mixture are trying to pass through this seal. When it's on the crankshaft and the seal rides on a seal collar, which is this, which is held on with Loctite 620. This is a very close fit, as you can see, very little movement when it's installed on the motorcycle. It doesn't touch the collar at all. It rides off of it about five tenths, five ten thousandths of an inch. So to install this, you take oil and it doesn't matter what kind you can use two stroke you can use um, straight 30 as long as it's a good oil you fill these grooves up all right now the grooves have some oil in it you set this over the seal just a little bit just like that Now it's just setting on top of that collar. I put more oil in. And then what I'm doing here is letting gravity do its job and letting the oil fill the grooves inside the labyrinth seal. And I help it along by turning it, moving it a little bit. And eventually, all that oil I put in there is inside that seal. And I'll show you how much this seals, how well this seals. Okay. This isn't actually touching the collar now. It's riding on little molecules, little ball bearings of oil. And to demonstrate how close this seals, but yet does not touch, I'm gonna hold it upside down momentarily. Spin it a little bit. Now there's oil inside of this seal. I think that's long enough. Now if you look on here, it's completely dry. No oil leaked out. Now of course over time, if you left it like that, it would probably seep through, but it just shows you how close of a tolerance that is and how smooth that turns. And when this is installed in the motorcycle, this is why it's so very important to just use a very, very tiny amount of Loctite. I mean, a tiny amount. It's kind of hard to demonstrate without having some, but the tip of this pick, that's about the size of the drop it needs on two sides, 180 degrees apart and 90 degrees from the engine parting line. Now, if you were to put a big old blob of Loctite on there, smear it around, and like I've seen way too many times, and some customers have done, and they reported back that their crank isn't spinning freely, what you're doing there is it tends to set up a little bit. It's supposed to have a 30-minute window of working time, but I think it's much, much, much quicker than that. I like to see the Loctite installed within the last 60 seconds of the assembly of the crankshaft and the crankcase. In other words, everything's ready to go together. The last thing to do is to set the drops of Loctite and set the crank and button it up, start torquing it. Now, if somebody were to put a big blob of Loctite on there, set the crank in the case, let's say the blob was on the bottom, set the crank in the case, and then start to put the case sealant around, which could take Realistically, five minutes, 10 minutes, if you're very picky, particular. And then what's happened is now the seal is resting on a puddle of Loctite that's starting to set up and it pushes the seal this way very hard so that it's actually higher on this end and lower on this end. So what the seal is doing now is it's touching the collar. So when you go to spin the crank, you find it's hard to turn because that's rubbing. Customers that have done this have taken the crankshaft out of the case, scraped every last bit of Loctite off, applied it the way I 
demonstrated to them. Set it back in, crank turns freely by hand. So that's how crucial it is. These seals are great. And the other problem with these seals, if they're not installed correctly, here's an example. The seal collar can fusion weld itself, friction weld itself onto the inner bearing because basically what happened here, the seal was not centered between, I'll use this one for demonstration. Here's one already installed with the bearings. Watch how much this labyrinth seal moves. Okay. There's a good, I don't know, maybe 40, 30 to 40 thousandths gap on either side of here. This seal needs to be positioned between the two, right there, before it's buttoned up. Some people use the safeguard, it's not a bad idea. Maybe put a 10,000 feeler gauge on either side of this when they put it together until they get it set in. And uh, yeah, just so it's not touching the inner race of the bearing. So what happens if you install it up tight against there, now the crank is turning and this and the inner race are rubbing and they'll actually weld themselves to each other. Now in this case, I pulled the labyrinth seal off. Let's see if I can find it here. Here it is. I was able to break it off. You can see how it fusion welded itself onto there, up tight. And that's why it's crucial to center that. Other than that, once you set it up, if your cases are in very decent shape, that seal will last forever. I have some seals that I've taken off of bikes with uh, one of them had over 40,000 miles on it. It hydrolocked um, when they started it. Uh, somehow fluid got into the case and it hydrolocked, bent the rod. So the crank came to me for a rebuild and I pulled the labyrinth seals off and they specced identical to a brand new labyrinth seal. So they last forever, they work great. Um, I believe right now, I think I'm the only one that's supplying these. These are made proprietary to me uh, for my crank builds. So I hope that explained the, the way they work and the way they're installed. And um, thank you for your attention.